My name is Alan Hawes, and this is PSOC 101. One of the coolest things you can do with PSOC is to detect the presence of a finger by sensing its capacitance. Put simply, PSOC offers the best capacitive sensing on the planet, and our CapSense component makes it really easy to use. All the Pioneer kits have sensors, which we can use individually as buttons or combine together to create a slider. In this lesson, we will show how CapSense provides a very sensitive slider with just these five sensors. First, make a copy of the UART project because we're going to report finger position to the terminal emulator. Search for and add a CapSense component. Rename it and add a slider widget. Notice that by default, it has the name Linear Slider 0 and uses five slider sensor elements. You can design your boards with more or less depending on the resolution you need. As you'll see, with five sensors, we can easily deliver values from 0 to 100. Next, we pick the pins in the DWR. You'll need to use the PSOC 101 webpage for the pin selections for your Pioneer kit. First, select the CMOD pin. CMOD is an external capacitor that stores charge for the CapSense block. Then, select the sensor pins. Before writing the C code, you should generate the API files. In our C code, we can delete everything except for the UART start function and the global interrupt enable macro. Like EasyI2C, the CapSense block fires interrupts while scanning to update the internal data structures. Start the CapSense component. It is important that this line of code comes after the interrupt enable macro. This is because CapSense defaults to using an auto-tuning feature, which relies on the interrupts being enabled in order to set up the component correctly. Next, initialize the baselines. This zeroes out the noise and the parasitic capacitance on your printed circuit board. Then, run the scan enabled widgets function to start the scanning process. This function returns immediately as the hardware block can do the scan in the background. In your code, you must only read the scanning results when the scan is complete, which you can determine from the isBusy function. In the main loop, check if CapSense is busy. If it's not, that means the scan is complete, so you can act on the results. The get centroid pause function takes an argument for the widget you are interested in. In our case, there is just one slider, but you could have configured several of them. The name of the widget is generated by the component and follows a formula. It starts with the component instance name, then the name of the slider from the customizer, which in this case is linear slider zero. But that has to be capitalized. Lastly, you append the type of widget, which in this case is the string ls with two underscores. The get centroid pause function returns a 16-bit value for the position of the finger. If there was no finger present, then it returns 0x ffff hex. You're going to send a message to the terminal about the finger position now, but only if there was a finger position on the slider and the position had changed. The UART has a UART put string function that requires a conversion of the numerical result from the get centroid pause into a string. Do that with the sprintf compiler library function. At the top of the file, add an include of standard io.h and create a character buffer for the string. Then make a call to sprintf in the main loop to copy the number into the string and append a carriage return and a line feed character. Once you have the string, just print it out on the UART. Lastly, you need to update the CapSense baselines using the update baselines function to correct for changes in the environment. Then restart the scanning process using the scan enabled widgets function. In the terminal emulator, you will see that you have very fine control over the value of the slider, even though it has only five sensors. For your challenge, I want you to replace the slider with a pair of buttons. Just configure the sensors at the opposite ends of the slider to be CapSense buttons. In the C code, detect presses and releases on both buttons and report them via the UART. 
Make sure you do not just stream the data all the time. You're going to have to detect a change in the button state, either up or down, and just report the event only once. As always, you're welcome to email me at alan underscore hawes at cypress.com.